Divers Sink is a weekly netcast where we talk about the world of scuba diving, fantastic diving opportunities, and some of the happenings in the underwater world. We also provide tips and discussions about scuba diving and get excited about upcoming dives and adventures. Learn how you can join us on our dives and become part of the program by following Divers Sync on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, or by visiting our website at www.diversync.com. Hello and welcome to Diver Sync, the netcast and podcast for scuba divers. My name is Rich Sinowick and you are listening to episode 512, recorded April 30th, 2023. And once again, I started this podcast, got 20 minutes into it, and did not hit my Zoom record. And I just need to figure this out a little bit better. Maybe I need to do it a little bit more often, but today is the last day of the month of April and I've sat down five times to do this podcast this month alone and it has just been slammed and it's not because i have not been good at time management which i kind of suck at anyway but the time management part of it was taken up because my mom asked me for easter weekend to be able to do a celebratory family get together um in on lake michigan and i think stevensville was the name of the place and it had some really cool things journeyman's distilleries out there the beach the really really nice dunes um it was really cool and while that was a easter weekend and and along with that i had some other things which i'll bring up but easter weekend was a really neat thing what i did is we went to family right and we didn't walk the beaches and we did all that kind of stuff but i had some new technology that i wanted to try and I'm really into trying to make this podcast something that is just spectacular. So if you are listening to this on Spotify, there is a video version of Spotify that I've never even used. This is The video version is available on Spotify. You can do the video and the audio. I'm not really that familiar with the Spotify video part of it, so let me know how that works. Put it in the comments, put it somewhere, send it to me on Facebook, put me a link, or if you've got that, I don't, I don't, I don't really have Spotify. I listen to podcasts through Audible pretty much. The, the, but if you're watching this on, on Spotify, that's something new. If you're listening to this on Spotify, I'm hoping it's seamless. It should be just like, other than the fact you can't see the videos and the stills that I'm talking about, it should be just like the podcast of old where I was talking about certain things. And so we're going to try to make this a little bit better. I'm going to try to finish hitting Zoom. But one of the people that was on Facebook one time said, why don't you try doing 12 for 12? If you can't do every week, which I was doing previous, try to do 12 for 12. And so that's what I'm trying to do. So Easter weekend, though, was when I was going to originally do it. My mom said, can you come do this? I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And it turned out to be a good time. So I got to, the technology that I got was a 360 camera. And you, we talked about it last last episode. I told you that my friend from Dive Sega had brought it to Munising and had done some really cool stuff with it that made it look like a drone. Now, during 2020, I got a drone. And then I it was a two-for-one special. or, three, or There was a two-for-one special. Or, or Now that it was delivered, here's a coupon for two more. And there were $150 for three drones. Learned how to fly them. They don't last very long, crashed one of them, um, got to fix it, learned how to spare parts, but it was too much. Every time I sat down to do something with it, it was too windy or it had too much setup time or something like that. So I gave it to my kids and I wanted to find something because I really like the way drone photography works. And I'm not really sure that I want to do the expensive drone and I don't really need another hobby. So um, Easter weekend, we walked the beach and I... The way that this Insta360 camera goes, which I got and I learned a little bit about in Utila, is that it goes through and through AI, it erases the selfie stick. And there's a little blurring in it. There's a little bit of issue. I think it's all on me. But what you do is you take this 360 thing now that's all the way wrapped around you and you focus it. You can zoom it in. You can bring it back out. You can move it. And what's really neat is when if you go from a frame to a frame to a frame while you're editing, 
it does the zoom in a really nice way and it pulls it back out. Sometimes it's fast. And, and on the shorter videos that I've been doing, it's not working as well as I want it to. But I came up with one that's pretty neat. It's uh, It was me walking the beach and with my wife and my dog. And here it is. I'll share it with you. I turned down the background mute noise. And, but you can see the little zoom, that sort of thing. But if you look at it, you can sort of see the stick under my right arm. And I, my right shoulder is blurry because of it. Now, my wife didn't know I was even doing this, and she stopped to take a selfie. And on my Facebook page is the selfie. But the stick stayed right behind us. I zoomed this in to get in post-production. You can sort of see the, the selfie pole there, but you can see the shadow of the selfie pole too. And I think the technology's got some incredible potential. And so I, I'm happy that I got it. That is really cool technology to me. And my friend had a housing for it. It's only rated to, to like, the, the, the phone itself is rated to 30 feet, but it, when you dip it in the water, there's some refractory stuff and the AI doesn't know what to do with it. So it gets really, really blurry. I've been trying to get that to work because I really want to. They're good, the, the camera itself is dippable to 30 feet. You're not supposed to leave it down there for anything, but they comes with a, you can get a housing for it that's relatively inexpensive. And from the dive side of things, I watched a friend of mine go and use it. He's not all that happy with it because we're all in the learning curve. So it comes from, I'm really good with my fill in the blank here, this camera or this camera. I really love the Paralens. I wish they had stayed in business, but the there's a lot of things that are out there that are just really cool technology that we've gotten used to. And now as the new technology comes in, there's a learning curve. And so that, that was the weekend of Easter. It was really nice, um, really fun, but it takes up a whole lot of weekends. And Easter is typically the weekend that I spend getting ready for the quarry stuff. And I start getting all of my technical courses started and all of my IDCs finished up or started. Um, it tends to be, this month has been busy with an instructor development course. It's been busy with Tech 60 or uh, Tech 50. It's been busy with um, Tech Instructor training. And then I've also done, uh, I've done, I've issued like 10 specialties to instructors this, this month. So it is really good on top of the family stuff, but on top of the family stuff, those are three weekends that I just don't have the space. So it's a struggle. I started getting up a little bit early. I've started exercising. Yeah, I know I'm really, I think we should have done a, a fat diver challenge for this month because I've already lost 12 pounds. Um, I've got a coach. So it's kind of, it's kind of good investment. I would say if you don't, if you, if you're good about it. Um, but my, another weekend that I lost, which was spectacular was, uh, my wife around, uh, I don't know, around Christmas time, she said, um, I have enough points to fly us anywhere in the United States with my credit card. You pick the place. I'll take care of everything else. Okay. Sounds like a good deal. We're celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary this year. It was in April. And so she wanted to go someplace in April and I picked Charleston, South Carolina. I've always been to South Carolina and Charleston to go diving at the Cooper River. And Captain Tom retired and I hadn't been back in probably five or six years. And so I was looking forward to going back to the, see the, how it's changed, see the places that I really liked to go eat and, and the touristy stuff and all that. Um, but we didn't have a car. So we weren't going to rent a car because it's kind of extra added space that we really don't want to do, extra added money that we don't really want to do. And so what she did was she got an Airbnb that was walkable everywhere. But the Airbnb was spectacular. It was in a neighborhood that was built in the early, early time of this, of this country. The house that we stayed in was almost 250 years old and we just had a room, but the room was set up as its own little apartment. And that was in a neighborhood where the average age of the houses were, it was about 250 to 300 years old. There was a houses that we were walking down these, these roads and we'd walk through and there'd be like a giant plantation in the middle of, of this. It's not, it's really beautiful gardens. It was, I wouldn't say plantation, it's in gardens and they were gated doors and serious money. And, and Zillow called them in the, they were all in the millions. There were Bentleys parked in the street. There were Porsches parked in the street. And uh, the, the, each house had a plaque on it. And the plaque had the history of what family built it, what family still owned it, how it changed hands. And most of what it had in there, the family that was in it now was, had been in it for over a hundred years. And that was just really one of the coolest things 
that I can say from a historical standpoint, I don't do that. I do shipwrecks. And so when you're walking down and you're seeing, and, and Charleston has a, has a really interesting zoning in that if you want to fix or repair your house, you have to do it in the historical style. So all of the, the, the um, windows still had shutters that worked. All the porches still had the tile, the things that were original on them, all repaired and beautiful, really expensive way of living. But you couldn't go and knock down something that was 200 years old and put something up new. You had to make it look like it was 200 years old. Everywhere we went, we walked, um, we walked, and it was through these neighborhoods, and we, we used our Garmin watches. Um, I got the Garmin Descent Mark II, and I only used it for diving for a while. But this thing does some cool stuff from a, from a uh, the fitness was, has got me started looking at what was there. And now the mapping and the, the track me, and you could see the entire, every walk place we walked, if we turned on the watch to track us, it would track us and see we could go down different roads that we hadn't been before. One of the places that we get went when we were there was really a surprise. We walked into a liquor store that was on the corner because we wanted something to take home to the, the wanted wine. Did it wine and, and we were big gin fans, so um, and and I'm a big bourbon fan, but my wife's a big gin fan, so we went in to see what was there. There was a gin that was locally made, and we wanted to see if we could get some to take home. And so, what we did was we went, um, we walked into this place and. It, the the tavern the the liquor store was closed but the winer is open he said we'll come back tomorrow and and you it's worth the, worth the view so we went in there on the way back on one of our paths and we found out that the tavern is the oldest continuously running liquor store in North America it was built in 1686 and has a, been a liquor store since um, it's got a liquor store on one side and a wine and beer store on the other side and two different licensures it's run by the guy i met the owner he's a he's a, he said he was an attorney um by by practice and and he just liked liquor on the shelf in there i they had some of the rarest stuff that i had ever even heard of and it was all priced touristy levels i mean i'm I mean, there was a bottle of Weller's for $2,500. But they had a bottle of rum that I didn't even know it was. It was exclusive. It's a rum that I liked. It's called um, Diplomatico. And they had, it's called Diplomatico Exclusivo or something like that. It was $2,500. Uh-uh. Can't afford to be in that room. But they actually also had the, the, everything that, that people would have. It's not a really big place. But he had tons of little hidey holes where he had stuff hidden but that was neat it was it was a it was it was part of the whole experience i mean i got to spend a lot of time with my wife i didn't have any work to do um everything was covered uh, at the stores and then um but we were like we had a gap because she had we got there friday we had dinner friday night and then saturday morning we had um a breakfast planned and it was like a brunch and at one of the the high-end hotels and uh the high-end hotel stuff you can probably get something that's affordable but then um we had dinners each night and each one was a different type of dinner um there was uh high cotton was the last one that we did and i'm going to tell you the service there was spectacular i had not seen service that good at any restaurant um since uh since my engagement or since my my my, my honeymoon and I mean, I've been to some places that were really, really good. Some places that were seriously expensive. I've been to Vegas places and things like that where, where I was a guest for somebody. And the service, as far as a sit down, completely encased, engulfed experience, high cotton in South Carolina is worth, worth people going to. But Sunday morning we were open. So my wife's like, what do you want to go do Sunday? And I said, you know, I don't really have anything, but I, we've never been to Fort Sumter. And, uh, and I always saw, called it Fort Sumter. It's S-U-M-T-E-R. So I learned that on this trip. But Sumter is, for you guys that don't know, it was the first shot fired was at Fort Sumter. The, the Confederates fired it at Fort Sumter, blew a shell. And the um, I do think the Star Spangled Banner was, was had something to do with that too. But, but the rocket's red glare blew it up, started the Civil War. And... Um, that night, basically, the commander, Anderson, um, he, he, I think it was Major Anderson, he said, I I'm not sticking around. Everybody's going to die. We're going to get pounded. We're going to give it up. So he issued that he wanted to give up. They let him go. Um, and uh, they took over the fort. And the Confederates got pounded there. 
for the entire four years of the Civil War. 44,000 shells were, were reduced the place to just rubble. But my wife and I decided we were going to go do that. And so I'm going to do that as another podcast. And I don't have any video for this, for that, or pictures for that this time. But I'm going to do it for another podcast. And so what I have going on this one is that this one is going to be shot all on the 360. So hopefully I can get that to do something. The neat thing about um, Charleston is that you can get any everywhere, but it's a tourist destination. So there was Uber. So what our day was is that we Ubered over there, took a ferry over to the, the fort and hung out at the fort. And that was just cool. And it was, it had been part of the National Park Service since 1949 when the military had given it up. Um, and, and so I'm going to tell you all about that in another podcast, but last podcast, I hinted that I wanted to talk to you about the Santa Rosa blue hole. And that was, as you know, I'm trying to rebuild this podcast, but I have a gap and I have a lot of gaps. And the reason I have a lot of gaps is I've never done video on, on a podcast and talking about it, I, you're going to hear stories, but now I've got video to go with those stories. Well, sometimes I don't because in the last three years I've still traveled. I've still gone around. So what we have is I'm going through, the reason it takes so long, is I'm going through each one of my old uh, file folders and pulling the video segments because I wouldn't, I wasn't shooting primarily video, primarily video up until about 2010. And then I started shooting mostly stills um, with video added to it because it was a pain in the ass. And now video is a lot easier, a lot easier to edit. Um, and I'm getting better at it. I really do want to get this to at least twice a month so that I can get really good at this so I can, don't have to learn it every time I do and don't for, forget to hit record. But the uh, the one that, that, I, that I wanted to talk to you about was the Santa Rosa Blue Hole. And as I go through these, there's video and there's stills. Unfortunately, with the Santa Blues, Rosa Blue Hole, all the video was blurry. And I'm finding that I wasn't a really good video, as good of a videography as I was a photographer. So a lot of the little segments end up as reels on Instagram. So if you're following us on Instagram, you see that. If you're following us on Spotify, you're going to see them as this if you're doing the video. If you're listening to this on Spotify, you're going to have to go to another place that has video. But I'm going to ask you guys to do something. And if I asked you this already, remember I didn't hit record, so I think I did it, but I want to do this. So if you're watching this on Spotify, I know nothing about it, okay? So I want to know how that experience is and if it can be changed, if it can look, if it's worth it, okay? it's not. A, it, I'm taking this video and I'm uploading it to Spotify, the finished product, and it's becoming the audio. So when you're listening to it, you're listening to the video. So forgive me if you're not seeing what I'm talking about. That's on you. I'm going to try to do the little video segments as shorts as well. Um, but I'm also on YouTube, and that's where I'm prim primarily trying to get this podcast to go. So if you're watching this on YouTube, well, if you're not watching this on YouTube, you should go to YouTube and at least watch, let it play in the background, watch the whole thing, YouTube metrics on how long it goes and how much, how interested you are. Fast forward to the video sections and just look. I'm actually going to try to get them where they're, they're keyed in the bottom um, and, and put them into... Um, segments. I learned how to do that um, just recently. Um, but if you're watching this on YouTube or if you've gone to YouTube to watch me do this, please do this. Go like the video. So there's a little button on the bottom down here, like the video. And then I want you to subscribe to this channel and I want you to hit the bell button. What the bell button is going to do is the bell button. When I load a new video, it's going to pop up a notification that you can turn off if you don't want it. But it's going to pop up a no notification on your web browser that I have started a new video. Now this, I want you, you know what to do. I mean, you've done this on every time you like something, every time you heart something, every time you subscribe to something, a metric goes in and it makes us a little bit more popular and it helps me monetize this, helps me get some kickback and it helps me see if there's anybody worth listening to. I don't care if there's two people listening to this, the two Patreons that I have right now. Um, I, I appreciate the patrons awesome. I mean, take advantage of it because you get with your membership, you get access to me and I'm very happy to answer it. I'm looking for things that I want to talk about. I kind of want to have an equipment segment on this because my equipment's changed over the course of, of many years. I want to kind of talk about how, how I do it, um, how I do certain things. But I've found that there's people that say, Rich, I don't know how to change an O-ring on a tank. I don't mind putting a reel together to do that. 
And if you want a private one, cool. If you want a private one-on-one -on -one with me, cool. There are patrons that can do that. But you know how to deal, do the things we're talking about YouTube. What I want you to do on YouTube is, again, make sure you subscribe to YouTube. Make sure you like it. Make sure you hit the button. You do the things. And then help me get to a place where this channel means something to YouTube. I know you're already watching it. It means something to you. So get, we need to get it to mean something to YouTube. Okay, so so um, I, I really appreciate you watching this far into it. So let's get into the Santa Rosa Blue Hole. So I went to the Santa Rosa Blue Hole on a trip back from Lake Mead um, in Nevada. And the way that the trip went is we took the high road. And I didn't even know there was a high road and a low road crossing the United States. But we took the high road across the United States down to Las Vegas, Nevada. We went through Utah. We went through the Rocky Mountains. We went through Vail, Colorado. We got to see some spectacular stuff on the trip. That was non-diving, okay? When we got there, last episode that you listened to, the one before this, if you have, this is your first episode, go to the last one. We went to the B-29 Bomber, a very unique dive site in the middle of the desert in Nevada. So when we were done with the last day, the guy that was running the trip, a guy named Joel Silverstein, it has to be guided. So him and his son were our guides. But Joel Silverstein, he suggested to Jill and I, he goes, are you going to the Santa Rosa Blue Hole on the way home? How are you going home? And I said, we're going to go, I don't know. He says, well, did you take the high road or low road in? Didn't know there was a difference. So we're doing in the low road now. Well, the low road takes us past uh, the Grand Canyon, which girls hadn't seen that. The twins were with us, so the girls hadn't seen that. And then it takes us to down past Crater Park, which we didn't get to, but that was something. But the Santa Rosa Blue Hole was something he suggested we dive if we're driving through that area. And I would have never even known about it. I had heard about it because cave diving community had the Santa Rosa Blue Hole as a cave dive. And there's a little entrance to the cave that's all locked up and chained. And there's plaques all over it where people have died there. But it was, it's, it's really a small thing. It's tiny. And so it's in the middle of nowhere and it's a big spring. And so I want to share some pictures with you. These are stills. Um, I found out that Facebook, or I found out that Zoom Last episode, I found out Zoom doesn't really like the videos. So what you're seeing is if you're on the Zoom watching this or if you're on Spotify watching this is I'm actually able to voice over all the slides because those are just screen shares. But when I voice over the, the, the other ones, there's some issues with it. So forgive me if I'm like talking about something that isn't there. So, hey, I'm trying to line it all up, but we'll see. But slides we can do so let's go ahead and share some of those this is the santa rosa blue hole this is stolen from their website um and it's if you look at santa rosa blue hole mexico it's a really cool spectacular shot someone took i think they're actually on a ladder because there's a mountain top behind it and you're looking from the back like the parking lot is over to the left and the main building is right there in front of you the whole thing is about 60 feet in diameter. They say it's three acres, but I don't know what they mean by, is it three acres of water? Or is it three acres including the park around? I'm thinking it's three acres including the park around because there's a three acre lake up here called Spring Mill Pond, and this is much smaller than that. But those uh, platforms, as they call, we'll, we'll get into that. I got better pictures of that. Those platforms that are down there for training, those are in um, 30 feet of water, and it looks like there's no water there at all. Okay, with this next slide, you can see up over here, this is cool, we can use a pointer because this is how I teach my Zoom classes. A lot of the classes that we teach right now, Patty allows us to teach on Zoom. So I'm getting used to this, but it's I'm still not awesome at it. Uh, everybody gives me not a hard time about it, but they do give me some, a lot of slack. But this is the sign. There's a bigger sign now, uh, but this was the sign that was off their website. Again, I stole this from their website. And what we have here is we have the blue hole it's a maximum depth of 81 feet for the open water portion. Um, they say that it's temperature 61 degrees and its diameter is 60 feet. So it's not really that big, but it was really cool because they have like this ledge right around the outside here that was in about 20 feet of water. There's one up over here in four feet of water. And I don't remember what day we were there, but there were some people, we got there real early and then there were some people that were doing open waters and that sort of thing. But you could jump off the rock here and swim over. You could jump off the platform here and swim over. And there was there was a way you can swim around it. And they had a liability release. I think it cost 20 or five, 25 or $30 to do the dive there. And it was just one of those 
places that was a surprise. The biggest surprise that was in there was how much how cool it was. There were crayfish that were bright red. I mean, super bright red. And they were they were there. They were something unique. I'd seen different colored crayfish, but I'd never seen these that were they were they, the, the camera didn't take as hot red as these things were. But what it was was just like a quarry. They had sunk different things. There were different monuments there. That's from the base. And the, the top of it was, it basically opened up underneath. It funneled out. So if you think of a, a, a funnel uh, or a cr- ice cream cone upside down as just the cone, it got wider towards the bottom. And it, you could see the surface the whole time. And the visibility, I mean, you can see how tiny my wife is in that. It, it, it was just the visibility you could see from wall to wall pretty much. And as we were going through it, there were little nooks and crannies, the little little things that people would put. There were faces, there were rocks, there were monuments to people. Um, and you can see a little bit here about how blurry my, my camera it was. I don't know what happened. It got foggy or something. Um, but the Santa Rosa Blue Hole was a, uh, is a um, altitude dive. And it's a altitude dive. You can see a little critter on the bottom here. The altitude dive that there we go. That's a good picture to just sit and talk on. There's an altitude dive. It's at 4,400 feet. And we were there. Um, I had read up on becoming a altitude instructor um, because I had um, I, I had the desire to do it because of the uh, silo, the missile silo that we used to do, uh, or what we still will do um, in Texas, is at a high altitude as well. So the idea is you have to spend about six hours getting to altitude or six hours at altitude to let your body adjust before you go diving. Well, there was also some things with shear water that you had to adjust. The Prism 2, the rebreathers that my wife and I were using, they have to be calibrated in a different way because they were at altitude. Sometimes the, the HUD does not calibrate and they, there's, you had to, we had to look that up and, and find out how to do that. We didn't really have any problems with it. We pulled up into a parking lot, we signed in, we set up and it was a beautiful day. I mean, it was like 90 degrees, 80, 90 degrees and uh, just gorgeous. And we were, we went diving and had a good time just touring around this. We did, a, I think we did, I think we only did one dive, but we might've done two, but it was a, a really, I mean, the visibility was spectacular and it was a neat formation dive and it, i don't know that it would be a dive that i would go to as a destination like i wouldn't talk someone into going there and saying let's go diving but i think it would be a dive that if we were going to go do the things where we had crater national park and the grand canyon and another couple dive sites on the on the idea um, it might be something worth doing as if you're ever down there, I highly recommend it's worth doing. They do rent stuff. They do have gear. There's a dive shop in town. Um, we didn't need that. We brought everything with us, but it, it was something that you, you, uh, can expect if you're in that area for whatever reason. But the, they had these, some, like there's a weird monument and there's skeletons of mermaids and, and, and such, but they had all sorts of different things in there but this was the cool thing i had never seen anything like this and i thought it was a great idea and i'm gonna do it at the quarry but let's go i don't i thought i sorted these a little bit better but maybe not um so this is a platform that they use it's not a real platform it's just a frame square and it's supported by four buoys and it's held down by one weight and it you can see the buoys in that picture and it is just a neat idea that's relatively inexpensive. It's not going to be the thousand dollars a lumber of the platforms that we have at White Star now, but yeah, I, these aren't the sorted ones. I don't know what happened, um, but there's a good picture of it. The but it's four posts, and I'm going to try to do it where the four posts are held up, not to the surface, because I want to have some platforms, especially this month where I'm running so behind. I normally have the platforms up first of April. And the platforms aren't up yet. And so I want to have platforms in case somebody wants to do early season training that they can that are permanent. And I have one, but nobody knows where it's at. So it's unfortunate. But my wife hung out, posed on it. They had these bars. There was one that was just a bar as well. I thought that was a neat one. But the the idea behind them, I took a bunch of pictures of them because I'm going to mimic them and make it 
that something that I can build and and change. But there's the shallow portion, and then there was another step up. If you look to the right there, another step up from there, um, and then that's all the pictures. So the Santa Rosa Blue Hole was cool, and it was something that I wish I would have had video, would have taken video. I'm getting when I was in Utila, and you'll see that in a little bit, which because that's what I'm talking about next. I I talked about in Utila, we have we brought a bunch of cameras and when I made a decision a year ago that I wanted to get into video, I wanted to get into a little bit more of this. And when I started doing these podcasts, I wanted to take and invest a little bit more into cameras that could take video. I mounted a paralens on the top of my still camera and just let it run. And it's a pain in the ass to go through all of that. It takes hours to go through it all. So I tried to, to, to different, different things with it. But if you've been following me on Instagram, I do the reels on the diver sink, the real diver sink.com or the real diver sink. It's diver sink.com, but the real diver sink is my, my Instagram handle. And you'll have seen some of the cool stuff. I turned the parallel sideways. And so it looks like I'm running my phone and it's all for 4k. So the quality is spectacular. And I, my, my computers can't really keep up. So I'm trying to make that work a little bit better. And as I progress, I would be very happy to share it with you if you're into it. Now, unfortunately, just before Edema, I found out Paralens filed for bankruptcy and they didn't survive. It is a great camera. Um, but if you could spend in $500 on a camera and then not having the support that you need, that's a little bit rough. So I bought two more. I was going to put them in rental anyway. And so I'm going to put them in rental at White Star because they really are... are point and shoot you go and take and hand you a disc you're you got great video but my kids got into it and so when we were in utila i had one that followed me and it was a follow it was a it's like a selfie stick it was like a drone that followed me i'm not there's some video that you see where i've done that i put that together and i'll show you that but i also had it running in color correction mode so it did I don't like the color correction. I, I think that the, some of the reasons, you're always looking for why the, the company went bankrupt. They rushed it a little bit. I think the color correction is a little bit too orange for my personal taste. Um, I like the color correction when I can manually shoot it. It's just, I didn't shoot video before. Now I'm shooting video all the time. And so the video with the 360, the video with the um, the Paralens, I have gone into the water now in Utila on three different dives where I'm shooting three different cameras um, do one thing and do it well has always been my motto but some of these are really automatic so what i'd like to do now is i'm going to share with you some stories about utila utila is a really little island and it's even made littler still that there's not a lot being done commercially on the island so if we were going to look at it from a standpoint of Bonaire, it's about tenth of the size of Bonaire. And then if you talk about the usable space in, in Bonaire, that again is about half of that. So, so the tenth of the size and then a fifth of the size in the usable space. So we stayed on the resort the whole time. We stay at Utila, Utila Lodge and it's operated, by, um, the diving is operated by the Bay Island College of Diving. And it is a um, resort I fell into in late 2019 when I was teaching a uh, trimix course and in the late 2019 i had made a decision to go there as a trip we had been there in 2018 but with a different resort and in 2019 because i was helping teach a trimix instructor course at the bay island college of diving they had put me up and i said this is spectacular it's an eight room resort and this trip we went on was my family four of us and then four guys who took the rest of the rooms and one other couple that wasn't with us and it's neat it's uh, the, the resort is beautiful it's very simple um the diving is all right off the resort you walk out picnic table set up your stuff go walk in the boat for the open circuit people you don't touch anything if you don't want to you they will put your gear together they will walk it out to the boat they will put it on the boat they just ask that you analyze your nitrox and that you make sure everything's there so you don't have to do anything if you don't want to but get up, get on the boat. There's not a lot of other things to do there other than socialize and take naps, but we do three dives a day. One of them might be a night dive. And then the meals are all um, sit down family style, plated, and it's included. So our package included meals, our package included diving, our package included nitrox. Um, and the 
the, 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 the bar is right there. If you want to go and have, have a cocktail at the end of the day, um, that was really inexpensive. So uh, there is a couple of dives I want to take in. I got hours and hours. I mean, I shot over 2,500 images and I think it was like 1,600 hours or something like that. Some ungodly amount because it was four cameras, right? My people, my kids and my. So I want to share that with you because I want to make sure that I take it step by step. I'm going to do it in short increments. I don't want to bore you. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube and you've gotten to YouTube and you want to take the episodes, you look down in the comments, you can go back and review each one of these videos as you go. I'm going to have them uh, indexed. That's what I was looking for, indexed. So let's go ahead and do that. So this first video is uh, the whole group and we're deeper than them looking up. It looks like it's flat, but we're actually on a hill going up a little drop off. And uh, the dive master's in among there and, and the group is there. And what you're going to see here is this is me shooting deeper with lights. And sometimes it comes out really good. Sometimes it comes out really bad. Um, blue. I kind of went through these to the ones that had a little bit more popping of the color. We're probably in 100 to 130 feet here. And you can see that the, the videos do a pretty good job. But the reefs are incredibly healthy. Um, it's very seldom that people are going to come to this. It's hard to get to Utila. It's a little bit of a pain. You got to go through uh, Curacao, or not Curacao, you got to go through Roatan or through the mainland. And there's a ferry over there, or you can take a plane. Well, what we ended up doing, unfortunately, on this one is we ended up planning on the ferry and then missing the ferry. So I had American Express three flights to get one flight to get the first half of the group, second flight to get the second half of the group, and the rest to get the luggage and our dive gear. It was not a pain, but it was something that actually happens on expeditions. And that's kind of what I do as far as the difference of why you should travel with me. That's a little um, juvenile um, drum. That's what it's called. It's a drum. And they're really, really pretty as babies. Um, I've got some really baby pictures I'm going to do as far as the reels and shorts and that. So if you're on YouTube, you can look through the shorts and maybe find them. I haven't done them yet, but I've set some aside because they are really cool. And um, it's, it's, I had three in that picture. This one's only one. But back to what I do is I want to make sure everybody has a great time and that they don't have to worry about anything. So you're going to write me a check. We're going to take care of it. And we're going to set everything up. And I was, I don't normally do airfare, but I'm going back to doing airfare. It's a lot more expensive on my part. It's a lot more work on my part, but it's just too much work. I end up doing a lot of it anyway. So I'm going to, but you can go on a trip and it'd be seamless and a little little stingray there with my wife's taken but we have um we're doing it seamlessly and trying to make it so people are having a great time and the diving is just a part of it i want people if they want to go snorkeling we can do that there's no shore diving really you can shore dive but it's sandy mucky bottom um there are some cool things on the shore dives there but it's all off a dock it's in a marina basically um, but this is all boat diving. And so some of it's deep wall diving, some of it's deep reef diving, some of it's uh, wreck diving. I'm going to show you a little taste of everything. This is the deep reef dives. Um, we, we have places, the weather was really rough on this trip. And we had to take, and we had to reschedule a night dive. We had to go someplace else for a night dive. But one of the things that we ended up doing is we ended up going to a couple reefs where the buoy markers had been put back on it now this is me with the selfie i like i was trying with the selfie stick to try to get some things i'm trying to make it more of a documentary i'm going to keep this as a podcast but i also want to do some things where uh, if you've like watched dive sega you'll know what i'm trying to emulate he's a really good friend of mine and he's doing really good productions and uh, he is from utila this he he kind of goaded me into starting to make sure that my videos were good and that like my new background back here is not going to stay but i'm going to do something with a studio make it look a little bit more. That was the deep brief video. So editing that, putting it all together, that was for you. And you'll see a lot of the stuff that I didn't put in that in shorts on YouTube. And you'll also see it in reels on Instagram. Lots of cool stuff in little segments. So the next one that I want to share with you is one of the cool things about Utila is that it's a little island on a deep channels all around. It gets to be five, six, seven hundred feet all the way around it. And so there's some sea mounts and all that. But they have whale sharks, they have dolphins, all different breeds. And we left, but Roatan had actual killer whales and they have had a whale there. 
that come visit. Okay, who knows what. But the, the captains are guaranteed a tip. Comes right, it's a part of your contract. They're guaranteed a trip if they can get you in the water with a whale shark and they can get you in the water with dolphins. We didn't see any whale sharks, but we did see dolphins. So I'm going to share that video with you. Okay, this is how you do the video, or this is how you do whale or whale shark, which we weren't doing. This was dolphins. Everybody puts their mass snorkel fins on, and everybody looks, and they say, all right, get ready, and everybody gets in the water. Go, 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 go. And what they're doing is they're putting you in the path of these giant pods of dolphins, and they swim around and under you, and sometimes they play with you. We had one um, the first year we were here where they actually went and played with us, but this is us um, just watching them swim us swim by, and it was just an incredible experience. It was about 10 minutes, and they some swam close. Most had babies or smaller ones with them, um, and these were uh, bottlenose dolphins. They're known to be skittish. If you have a sawtooth dolphin, they can come and play with you a little bit. Um, but you can see everybody getting up close and personal. Anybody who got in the water, got in the water. They had snorkels for us. If you didn't like a snorkel, you don't normally do a snorkel. But it was, it's always exciting to see the pelagic stuff. And they, they live in the ocean. They stay in the ocean. They don't usually come down to see you in the reefs. Um, you're not allowed to snorkel down to them. You're not allowed to chase them. You're not allowed to ride them if you can get that close. But they were just incredible to look at incredible to watch and the boat wants you to do that we want to chase them um i had um we went and we we're chasing another pod to possibly get into it um on the, on this day and what we ended up doing was ended up breaking the boat and so <laughs> we, we sat out there and there's some really good 360 video of the dolphins but um also good 360 video of us being towed back by another dive boat from the resort um, they had it fixed. They had it fixed, and, and we only missed out on that boat. We only had to go um, on a different boat with one dive. We didn't miss any dives. Um, we missed, um, I think we, yeah, actually we missed one dive because of it, but it was right after this. So after the dolphin experience, we had a dive in the morning, we had the dolphin experience, and then we had a really cool boat ride home. And this experience is always worth it. I mean, it's always what you can, can the reason you go. So dolphins are one of the cool attractions of Utila. And it's something that between every dive that's out in the pelagic water away from the harbors and out where the water gets really deep, the boat captains really spend their time making sure that they're looking out for dolphins and whales and signs for that. And that you can usually find them. It, it's, um, we've, we've been out there now, I think three or four times and we've seen them twice. And uh, twice in the dolphins and once in the whale sharks. The, uh, the boat. So let's tell you about the boat. So he's chasing us another pod. And when you're saying chasing, he's taking the boat and trying to get in front of what the normal path of the pod. He doesn't want to change the pod's path, but he wants it to get there. Pulls up in front of the pod, and for whatever reason, he says, I don't want to get in the water on this one. We'll move in a second. And he goes, something's wrong. And he flips it up. Never a good sign when they flip up the engine cover and move all your dive gear out of the way. And the shaft had come uncoupled from the engine. And we're not sinking, but we're not going anywhere. So, um, no big emergency. He picks up so the radio, calls the other dive boat. We wait for the other dive boat. They were done with the day. They came over, towed us in. And it just, the, the one hour trip back was now two and a half hour trip back. And I'm still sunburned from it. So, um, the, uh, but it was another part of the adventure, right? You go with the flow. You make sure things are fun. We have an expedition that, that is just really good and really exciting. And it doesn't really matter how that expedition turns out as long as everybody has a good time and everybody did so let's go ahead and share the next video with you um, this one is going to be the shipwreck the halliburton now the shipwreck the halliburton is something that um the i'd found out about it after our first trip to the utila lodge i was like is this an option i didn't even know this was an option and so the first year that we went, um, I, the, the first year we went with Utila Lodge, it was actually with a different group that we went. We didn't even know about it. And so they go to it. Utila Lodge goes to it, the, the Bay Island College of Diving. And it sits relatively close to the harbor. It's not a long trip out. It's in 100 feet of water, and it was a purpose-sunk ship. 
And the first year that we went there, if you've listened to the podcast, I talked about it. We went down and played with these giant groupers. They weren't there this time, but we went down and played with these giant groupers. We did a rebreather dive on this. So on this one, we weren't able to do that kind of a dive. But what we did was the rebreathers got in first and the rebreathers were able to stay a little bit longer. And so um, all the open circuit people had a great time. You'll see a video of them um, and then you'll see video of just us. So let me go ahead and share that one with you. The Halliburton, I don't know what kind of ship it was. The one thing I can tell you about it was that the visibility, according to my friends, was that it was the best they'd ever seen on it. And so we got down on the on this wreck and it is a reef that used to be a wreck. And there's tons of life on it. There's tons of things to see. Um, lots of mechanical stuff that you can still, t still take a good look at. The pilot house. Um, and we enjoyed it because when you don't have any bubbles and you've got a bunch of groups of people that are all incredibly good um, at their buoyancy control, you're not really worried about kicking up the silt. You're not really worried about, I mean, I think that's the big thing. When I when I got a camera in front of me, I, I want to watch where my fins go. I've been really good about it. Um, I'm not real good at wetsuit diving in my rebreather. I'm a little bit trimmed out heavy on my feet. But my kids, you can see Natalie and Olivia getting on, on the boat. And um, they came down a little bit after. And she's holding the Paralens selfie stick and the Paralens. That's got she, she has in her hands. But she's these guys are in there. Her sister's signaling her, I want to go this way. But um, the twins are an amazing buddy pair for you guys that haven't have been following my stories of it and, and a lot of people say i really like the, the stories of kids they've become incredible little young adults they're going to be 18 this year they're going to be dive masters natalie wants to be a dive shop owner um she wants to own my shop and and it's exciting to watch them dive like this they know sign language they grew up with it and so it's a second language to them so watching them have arguments underwater is kind of fun because they do get very violent with their arguments and hand signals. But on this video, my daughters asked to buddy up with the rebreather divers because the other people go through their air too fast. And so even then they didn't go through their air blowing kisses. She likes doing that. But the, uh, they, they, they dive, um, the Hollis, uh, um, BCDs, H HD 200 with the, uh, um, Poseidon regulators, Besides, are a little bit overkill for this kind of diving, but it's the ones that I got them, and, and they're all decked out in colors, and, and I love color. So you can see that they're staying with us, and then the, the dive master, right about here, I gave them back to the dive master and said, okay, you can go ahead and do the rest. Now, the dive that they did was about 20 minutes because it was 100 and something feet, um, and uh, the dive that we did was over an hour. So um, we kind of spiraled up this wreck, looking at all the sponges and the corals and the things that were there to see, and um, I, the visibility was great. And you can see the color correction. This was shot with the Paralens because it's their auto color correction. I don't know that I like it as much. I don't like the oranges. I want a little bit more blues and, and a little bit um, better. But I'm still learning. So I really don't know how um, to color correct that much. Um, on, this, <laughs> on this trip, I taught Jeff how to swim his rebreather through doorways and so he wanted to practice it and he did a great job and the uh um watch where fins are jeff but the the idea of shipwreck diving i love shipwreck diving and the fact that we can combine shipwreck diving with reef diving is one of those joyful little coincidences that don't often come up and uh utila had two wrecks that we were put on the first time we were there and they were basically runabouts that had deteriorated this was a true shipwreck it has an anchor on it far out you can only get on it with the rebreather and it had groupers on it just giant um goliath groupers and that was something we didn't see this time so the next video that i want to show you and and talking about utila is i want you to show um a couple of people commented over the years that their favorite trips or favorite stories were stories of how I brought my kids up. Started the podcast in 2010. My kids were already um, uh, five. In um, 2015, 
they got certified. So if you want to go back and listen, all the archives are there. I didn't take anything down. Some of the advertisers are no longer even in business. Some of the materials and some of the, the, the recommendations for gear that I had, I'm, I'm in a process of having, I have a, um, a, an assistant that's working on um, fixing, we're, we're basically turning the podcast into a book. And um, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can go through a read, pull out the sections, pull out this, and then it lets me go and use index to ed- edit so that I can fix those later on. They will always be available in their full segments through Patreon, but I'm going to trim them down a little bit, edit them down, get the ums out, get the things that are that are more natural, because this was always supposed to be a conversation around a campfire, right? I don't really, have, haven't really worried about how my speech is. I was a little bit concerned because last episode where I didn't hit record, like I didn't on this one, last episode I didn't record, did the whole thing and then was completely rattled. That is not my natural way of talking. This is more of me. So I do do a lot of ums. I do try to slow myself down. I am way hyperactive. And so when I go through those old ones, just ignore some of the things that no longer exist. Like talk show I'm not using anymore. And I don't have a chat room yet. For the Patreons that want to be on here, you can watch this live. And so I'm hoping that when I get to that point where people really want to start watching this live, that we'll have people watching this live and interacting and talking in that because the Zoom technology is just amazing. And um, in those ones, my kids were certified about 2015. So from 2015 on to 2020, those are ones that you talk about my kids. My kids got to go on a dream trip of 2020. Everybody canceled on the Isle Royal trip. They went on that. That's one of the episodes. That's just fun. Um, but this one is, I'm going to show you a video. So you can watch video of my kids. It's called Kids on the Reef. I just put it together as a segment that way. But my kids are, Olivia is all about the creatures. And she's in the blue. And Natalie is in the pink. And she's all about wanting to do a social media presence, wanting to advertise like dad she wants to be a scuba instructor she wants to be in tourism she wants to be in travel and tourism and they both are their their education they kept their grades up because i've held diving over their head for it it's like keep your grades up or you don't get to go on trips and they've never disappointed me like they'll come to me and they'll be finishing homework like in utila they were at the bar with a coke in their hands because that's what they did but coke in the hands played a fries in front of them finishing their homework because we had good internet. So here is my kids video put together from this. So that's Olivia and Olivia has um, been diving those fins in the tropics for forever. And Natalie has pink fins on, but they show up white and that's dive master um, to the left there, dive master John. But if you look at Natalie, she's got that selfie stick behind her and that toes it. You can't see the stick um, the way it's, it's not done through AI. It's done through positioning. Um, and you can't see the stick and, and unfortunately you have to segment it out. It's not all that pretty. I'm still learning how to do it cause you turn it on and you go, but she, she that's hand signal for, she loves you and, uh, waving and high and, and doesn't know that I continue taking pictures of the boat in the back, but I can't tell you how cool it is to have this as a family sport. Um, it is way more expensive. I mean, my wife and I were talking about how, our peers go to places like Antarctica and Wakatobi and the Arctic and um, Bikini Atoll and that sort of thing. And I can um, tell you that I could have afforded to do that if I didn't get my kids into diving, but I wouldn't have traded it for anything. The The look on their face when they see something cool, the look on their face and they, they talk. And they're, they're six, they're, ever since they were 15 years old, they'd always give me a... A little bit of the teenage attitude. It's not that cool, Dad. It's just this. You're my, it's something to my dad. And then when I see them talking about themselves, I know they're just making a show. They love diving. They love talking about this stuff. My my daughter, um, who couldn't dive today, um, she had a cold, but she came with us. She sat there and just gushed about all the cool stuff that she got to see on this trip. She was talking about nudibranch. She was talking about the stuff, that, the, 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 the just the little stuff that you see. And the, um, the way that I can tell you is that well you can see how wavy this was looking at the video this it was just seriously wavy back and forth back and forth um we had huge waves um and everything was sheltered but 
when you were up doing your safety stop, you, you really did feel it. But they spend their entire safety stop. They go through, they, the, everyone comes back at, like in this group, we had a bunch of people who were, were okay divers. Nobody that was a bad diver, but we had a couple of people that were okay divers that just burned through their tanks. So they were turning it at 15 minutes and coming back at 30. And so my, my kids would be here and they'd get hit an hour and have 1500 PSI because they're both um, athletic swimmers. They both um, exercise and they both have incredible air consumptions because they're little kids and they're little, they're, they're under five, they're, they're just over five foot. But lots of fun stuff to see and a lot of adventures to see when you're diving with your children. Um, and this is just, most of it is I was diving on a deep dive with the rebreathers and we come up and we hang out with the safety stop. Excellent color there. Um, the, but you can see the selfie stick behind her. And I haven't seen anything that she shot like this, but I'm sure someday we'll sit down and get all of our stuff tweaked together. I'm still trying to figure out how to index this stuff so that I can do a bunch of, th well, we'll talk about it in a second. So I actually, talking about how to index the things and get things together, I have been trying, like last episode, things weren't quite aligning up and I realized I had to do index marks, I had to do claps and things like that. But on this last video that I wanna show you from Utila, um, it's a pretty neat setup on how the whole thing works. Let's stop that. Because I was towing, I didn't take a selfie stick on every dive. They're a pain in the ass. They, you're kicking them. There, there's not a real good place to kick it again, clip it. I think get, and again, with a buddy that's informed, like if I can get Natalie and I to get this figured out, the buddy's informed and we can kind of get it indexed and figure out where everything goes. I'm not a videographer i've never have been i wanted to be a stage producer decades ago but that's a business that's not as that's that, that's a business that's harder to get into than diving so on this last video when i was putting it together though i was just doing the screenshot stuff that i would normally do and i noticed that i had while i was swimming and the cameras i've got a camera in my hands like this and i've got the the, the parallels on the top up here and i have the other one behind me but I can unclip that and pull it around. I was doing sideways selfies while I was doing this. So I'm holding it in my hand like this. And then I kind of just did one of these and pulled it around in front of me. Well, you might be able to see it because I don't know if I've edited them all out, but this camera swung in the path of the other camera. I could index it. So a lot of this now is from the same dive where you'll see me swimming along and then you'll see the reef and then you'll see me swimming along on the reef. And I think I like how it's the potential of it is, but I don't know that it's a great example of what can be done but it's at least something where i went ha huh, i can figure that out so give me just a second and we'll show that to you so this is the reef in utility you can see how wave it is i love sea fans and what we're doing is this is just the shallow reef this is all done on the paralens so you can see it's a little bit more orange than the color there's also oh, actually this is not on the paralens this is on the uh the, the bigger screen you can see that i had i had dust in one of my lenses or one of my domes and that's the paralens. So it's a little bit different. I'm trying to get them to match. I kind of looked for color. I want to have the whole thing seamless. So you're not going to one so different camera so you can't see it. I didn't even recognize it other than the fact that it had debris in uh, the dome, which I fixed later down the road. But I think that's the thing that's hardest with me getting my eyesight is not as great as it is. Little things underwater because I have magnifiers now. I can't wear these um, good glasses, but I, but I have magnifiers. Um, the big thing with it is I don't know that uh, I can see what's there. So I sometimes until I get it up to the big screen, I can't really see what is in front of me. I can't really see um, that there's a spot on the dome, that there's a bubble on the dome. And so it sometimes is real disappointing. I have chosen not to care. Um, again, this one is not so much a campfire discussion as it is a living room with slides. Um, I don't even know if anybody in my audience can even remember slides, but we used to have parties where you'd bring your vacation slideshow and you'd actually show the vacation slideshow or the movies that you, you took, actual film movies. Um, now some, some things just get shared on Facebook and just shared on YouTube and that's all you get. And so, um, that is actually me towing the selfie stick and, um, the, 
if you're listening to this on on um, Spotify, you're not going to have seen it. And if it's not quite aligned, I apologize because the sound is going to be tried to get keyed up with this, but it's not always possible. So um, it may be possible because I'm trying something new this time. And I, if it works, great. If it doesn't, then I'll just stick with the apology now. If you watched the last episode, you know that some of the things that I talked about of the B-29 bomber, like I described my wife swimming past something and it was not framed up together because I had no way of framing it. I had no way of getting it right. And now I've kind of done it a little bit different. But I have hours of this. This is the back of, this is if you were above and behind me diving off of the uh, reef with me. That's what you see. And if you were next to me, you'd see a big stick sticking out of my rebreather where it's clipped to my stand. Um, some of it has to be slowed down because it's a little bit jer jerky and, and that, but it's really, I thought it, it turned out to be a neat effect to be able to have, um, to cut away from me, to cut what I'm taking. Kind of like the uh, the stick we started with, the, the selfie stick that I did where my wife stopped and took a selfie on um, Facebook when I posted that my wife actually put in the comments the selfie she took at that time, which was, she's, I didn't even know it was there. So, but I trying to do more video. This is the first trip that I've done since the podcast started. And so I'm trying to do a lot more content for this. And I've got lots and lots and lots of content for reels. I've got lots of content for zoom. So I've got constant content, lots of content for this show. And it's just, takes a long time to go through um it took hours to edit all this and get it to be right and it's not exactly where i want it to be 100 percent, but it's kind of like if you if you plan you never act if you just continue to plan until it's perfect you never act and so i didn't want this but this is where i realized that i was swimming with my stick in front of me and then this was on that same dive so that's what i'm shooting while taking picture of myself and I think it's going to come out pretty cool in the long run um, once I figure the technology out a little bit better but I think that the potential is amazing and unfortunately the camera technology that I'm using has got a lifetime and I'm going to have to figure out new camera technology nothing's coming out with the paralens the reason I picked the paralens was that that little green housing right there is good to 1150 feet 500 meters there's no place on the planet i can't go where i would go diving that i can't take that camera so and it's small enough to fit in my pocket and forget about it if i'm going someplace where i just really don't want to take a camera and that's kind of where um if you can go get one i would highly recommend them um i i'm not 100% sure that they're always going to be around. I've tried. Uh, there's a, the, the, I got in touch with the guy who was the U.S. distributor of them. He has parts. Um, there's people that are printing parts for him. Um, but you're taking a, a big chance. So I'm holding the selfie stick while shooting the camera. So that is that came out pretty good, I think. So um, the, the, the technology is there. So the trip... I can't tell enough about it. And so I can't tell you enough about it. The We do it every year. We're going to go back in March next year. Um, the uh, the dates I don't have quite in front of me, but if you want to PM me, I'll be happy to have you. There are um, eight rooms. Um, 16 spots is what I start with. And if one person takes a single, now I'm down to 14 spots. And that's what happened with this one is that I gave up one of the spots early and then everybody except for my family decided that they wanted um, their own room. Um, for whatever reason, and uh, the trip was was uh, booked up full. So really nice group, and we had a great time. And uh, other than the waves being there, which didn't inconvenience us, it, it kept us from one night dive. Um, everything else was just a blast. And uh, there was a hiccup getting there, yeah. Um, but the, the, the trip home was um, amazing, and it was something that, I don't know. Uh, I, I learned a lot about it. Um, we're going to do it again next year. We're going to do it again with a, a stay in Roatan. Um, I'm thinking that um, we might we might try to talk about doing a charter because that wasn't all that awful. Give me a second. So that was the videos for, for Roatan. Uh, Roatan. Shoot. That was the videos for Utila. 
what I was saying in the video is that we, when we're flying next year, um, we're not sure. We're going to go through Roatan. I'm going to shoot for the ferry. Um, if there's not a real good flight for the ferry, I'm going to tell people that it's going to be an extra 250 or I think it was $350 a person when the whole thing was said and done. And it may be a little bit more than that because we only had eight people. Um, but we chartered the planes and it took forever to get there because we missed the ferry. So then we had to make last minute arrangements for charters. The first charter, these are teeny, teeny, tiny planes. And the first charter could take four people and like four bags. And the second charter took the last two people and six bags. Um, actually, there were two other people that missed it that they got on that with it. And then they had a charter for just the bags. And so all of them was taken care of. The resort took care of everything. Once they, they took care of everything and then they said, hey, here, here's, here's your bill. Okay, what am I going to do, right? And, and most people reimburse me, um, but half of it was my family, right? Well, well what are you going to do? So like I said, Utila was the first, Utila videos were the first trip that I put together. And I'm th learning that there's a potential maybe for a, a more polished show with it, but I like doing it this way. I don't have to worry about scripting. You can deal with the ums. People like me. People have listened to me. I really, really appreciate all of you who have reached out um, from for this have reached out and said, Rich, glad you're back. Um, really do like that. And, and for the people that have never heard from me before, go back and listen to the archives. Some of it's really, I mean, the first five or 10 episodes are awful, but there's a lot of good information there. I was trying to put a lot in there. We were looking at news articles. We were looking, trying to have a voice of what I was going to talk about. Here's the same thing. I'm still trying to figure out what you want me to talk about. What would you sit down and want to listen to this show for? A lot of people want to listen to the stories. Great. I can tell stories all day long. I can put Instagram posts up, but I'm watching like, like the other day I pulled up a reel and they told me how to make chicken salad. I didn't know how to make chicken salad. So watching it was a pretty neat little thing. But from that point forward, every time I sit down in my daily life, I'm questioning, what do you want to see? I mean, do you want to see the inside of a rebreather when I'm rebuilding one? Do you want to see how to change an O-ring? Is there something that's a question that's nagging you? Do me the favor, put it in the comments below, okay, if you're on YouTube. If not, go to one of the platforms, put it on Facebook, put it on that. So follow Facebook because Facebook, I'm going to start putting out reels. I'm going to have a group of, of people um, in my Patreon groups. I'm going to have groups of people that, that I'm going to ask you guys. I do this at, at our dive shop. I'm not doing anything with this podcast that I wouldn't do with the dive shop except making it digital, making it mobile, making it everything that you can do. I can mail you gear, okay, if you want to buy stuff from me. Support your local dive center. That's my always been my model, but if they're not doing the job for you, support your long-distance dive center. And what we've got, though, is I don't know. I've been doing this for 35 years. I've been diving since I was 10. That's 45 years. And so... There are things that I take for granted. We had this conversation in the IDC yesterday. We were talking in the classroom that there's people, you start talking about vernaculars like BCD and reg and kit. No one's going to know what that's all about. And I mean, I did, I'm doing a discover rebreather um, experience in the pool next Thursday. I'm going to drop a camera in the water and let, and, and hopefully it doesn't flood, but I'm going to put my 360 camera so everybody can swim around it. Maybe I can get something out of it to share with you. Um, I don't want to put my daughter in there because we don't want bubbles, right? It's all about being quiet and, and seeing excitement. But I put it out on Facebook and I put it out with a key demographic of, I, I, I have 35 Facebook or 35 rebreather divers that I have trained now and there's some key elements of what their jobs do, what their hobbies are and that. So I put a Facebook ad thing and, and got seven responses about how cool is this machine? I wanna get it, I wanna go diving and not a single one was certified. So that's kind of exciting that there's people that are reaching out going, the rebreathers are cool, let's try that. And I, Patty's cha made some changes. I'm still waiting on whether or not these changes are gonna be permanent. But Patty made some changes that allows you to make the decision really early on now of whether you're going to be a rebreather diver or closed circuit diver or open circuit diver. It is very close to being where you might do all the way through advanced and one open circuit trip 
and you can be a rebreather diver. So it's kind of exciting that way. And so for you guys that are still listening that haven't been certified yet, you picked a good time because the technology is there. It's just only money right now. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where I'm going with this. I hope you enjoyed the episode. I, it's going to be a little bit longer, I think, than, than the past episodes. Um, I'm shooting for a half hour of your time. Um, the the But I'm open to feedback, okay? If you want to bash me, if you want to do all that kind of stuff, go ahead and feel free, but I'm not going to talk to you about it. If you want to give me some positive stuff, you want to help me out, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, if I was running a dive center, what would you want out of my dive center? I mean, it is, um, one of the friends in a conversation the other day, he said, I never realized how easy it would be to be well above average in this industry as a dive shop owner. And as I look at the metrics, there's some that I'm below average. I don't do a whole lot of open water tropical dives, okay? But if you look at what we're able to do as a dive center, we're still the only dive center within three hours of us. You can walk in and get a Trimix fill while you wait. My whole staff knows how to fill Nitrox and Trimix. Okay, my whole staff is knows the, the whole Patty came out with this thing where they changed the standard that if you were watching someone on a dry suit, like if you were a certified, if you were an instructor, you could no longer teach the dry suit diver special or dry suit diver adventure dive if you're not an instructor in dry suit okay or and they can't unless the uh certified assistant was certified as a a dry suit diver they couldn't even be a certified assistant on a dry suit dive and there's a whole lot of things that changed on that we went to our staff and there was one person that didn't qualify and it took less than an hour and a half and to, to get them qualified so it was just real easy I mean, day, day and an hour and a half diving in a day. So it was real easy. And, and, but for us, but if you don't, but at that same moment, we had three or four calls. I want to take my open water. Do you guys rent dry suits? Yeah, we rent dry suits. Why doesn't your dive shop not? My dive shop doesn't even teach dry suits now because of the patty thing. So, Lots of stuff changed. I'm trying to do that. Um, looks like my lighting changed a little bit. I, I, I hope you're liking what you're seeing. I'm going to be slowly improving. I need you to help me with it. So if you're watching this, thank you. You got this far into it. Thank you very much. Reach out to me. If you want to support me financially, buy something from the Dive Center. Take a class for me. Or if you're not going to do that, get access to me. And the access to me is through through uh, the, the Patreon website so uh until next week um next week uh, next week i hope it's next week i'm thinking that the next this is now tomorrow is may so now we're gonna be next month i promise that i will have another one in may i'm hoping i have a couple more because my may trip it's going to be all selfie stuff because i'm going on a meg ledge dive if everything goes right i have um also we're going to start to quarry up we're going to do few more dives that way and i'm also teaching a tech um course so you're going to see some video from that so um and then uh, i'm gonna probably insert something i don't know oh the fort sumter is one of the things that i'll insert and then some uh i'll look and hopefully find something else that i can talk about so until next time i hope you're having a great week i hope you have a great month we'll see ya divers sync is a cooperation between divers incorporated and divers media group You can download archived past editions worldwide over the internet at diversync.com. If you wish to support Divers Sync financially, you can find us on Patreon for bonus content, announcements of live performances, product giveaways, and other opportunities to be part of the program. Help us promote our netcast by telling your friends and dive buddies to subscribe to Divers Sync on YouTube and Spotify. The opinions that you hear on Divers Sync are not necessarily those of any station, website, network, or advertiser. These netcasts are not intended to substitute for professional diver training. Scuba diving does involve risk and should never be attempted without the proper instructions, supervision, and training. Have any questions or comments? We'd love to hear from you. We are on Facebook and Instagram for messages, or you can email us via our website at diversync.com.